Um, well, with potters, we have several different families of potters, and um, the family of potters that I fall under is the frog woman feather woman potters. Mm -hmm. And the type of pottery that we do is basically made with the genital clay or the gray clay. And um, uh, prior to polishing or burnishing it, we add uh, several coats of white, um, what we call whitewash, which is the white clay to it, which will give it the back, uh, white background, and then we paint our design on there. Our, um, our designs are handed down through the different generations of uh, family potters. So my family has a set, um, set of designs that particular, particularly belong to the family. But what I also like to do is replicate some of the ancestral pottery. I like to do some of the ancestral designs only because it's more intriguing to, um, to a lot of people nowadays. Um, um, I think what's intriguing about it is um, we kind of think too as to what were they thinking of when they were painting the designs on them. Um, and um, also the paint, uh, the, the colors that they use are pretty much uh, similar to the colors we use today, but there are some that are that are a little different. So I guess family name and uh, generations of potters, the uh, designs are handed down through the different generations of potters <laughs> within okay. the family. You've stated that the youth aren't as willing to learn or continue pottery making. What do you think might need to happen in order for that to change? Um, I think what needs to really happen is that um, we need to get the, uh, even if it's uh, like I have grandchildren, get uh, our children involved when we're, when we're doing our artwork. Um, invite them to participate, um, you know, even if it's just making something small with clay. And another thing is that a lot of the native arts uh, needs to be implemented somehow into the curriculum of the classroom to where they can use it as maybe an extracurricular activity or um, they can use it for extra credit. And um, that I think that will spark the interest of some of the children. But other than that, it's kind of up to us to, um, to encourage them to, to make pottery. Um, I mean, for me, I'm saying pottery because I'm a potter. Um, otherwise, it's just gonna continue to, um, to be a dying form of art. In conversing, you said that you try to be conscious about the materials you're handling, uh, whether they may impact your health. Is this new, or is it something that you know you as Hopi have always been taught? I mean, um, I think it's more something that I've been more observant of, and you know, recently because of a lot of the the health issues among our people, mainly cancer. Yes. Um, there are, uh, such as uh, with the firing, you know, we, we use sheep dung nowadays, whereas uh, prior to the sheep dung, we had used uh, a low grade of coal called lignite. Mm -hmm. And the lignite firing, the smoke from the coal can be hazardous to your health. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more present day that I'm more aware of it and I'm more, uh, take more precautions with it because I'm getting up there in age and I, I don't want to have to um, deal with um, unhealthy issues. So um, sometimes I'm challenged to, are asked why I don't try this uh, certain technique or use this certain process or whatever. And now I'm more, um, I'm more um, aware of some of the health issues, so I have to think twice about whether to, do I really want to do this e experimental stage um, if it's going to jeopardize my health? And if it's not, you know, then it's something I'm, I'm, willing to, I'm willing to go with. I guess I can try to be innovative, but I've always worked with traditional materials. Um, that's more or less my comfort, comfort zone. Um, I have really, I have really um, never really used anything like commercial, um, commercial wear, uh, ceramic wear, or anything. And so recently, I had the opportunity to do so, and I didn't really like the feel, the texture of any of it. So, I think, um, I think as far as innovation, I think um, the forms would probably be something I would, uh, I would like to experiment with. 
but other than that, um, the techniques as far as the traditional way we or I uh, make the pottery is something that I would like to stick to and not have um, have like a commercial wear in there or um, um, maybe somewhere down the way I might you know uh, experiment experiment with it. But currently, it's um, I'm comfortable where I am. I'm at. Sometimes it's uh, it's a little hard to go in that direction, especially when you're comfortable with with the the shapes and the designs you're doing because um, you know when you first start uh, doing a new set of designs, a new set of shapes, then it's going to take a little longer for you to create paint or uh, whatever those new uh, um, designs and shapes. So when I want to try the new designs or exper experiment with new shapes, um, I like to do it when I'm not really um, pressing for time. That way I can take my time on it and um, get the feel of, you know, how long it's going to take me. And usually when you do it the first time, it takes you a long time to, to get to your accomplished or desired shape, size, or, you know, design. But if you do it repetitively, it bec you become more comfortable with it and it's easier for you to do. You stated that your favorite forms are tile and canteens. W what draws you to these forms? Complexity? Uh... Um, I think I think what what really draws me to that is that um, they were actually uh, things that our ancestral potters did before a lot of the new shapes came into being. Um, tiles um, actually came about. Um, when I was uh, commissioned by an Anglo to uh, make some tiles for his fireplace and I had never done tiles before. My mom had worked with tiles and she said it was very hard to do but um, I found it very easy for me. Um, and uh, it was about the 1890s um, when tiles first came into um, being with the Hopi potters and that was because of tourism. The um, the tourists were coming to the Hopi Reservation and at that time a lot of the potters were making large wares and tourists, many tourists couldn't take that with them so there was a trader named Thomas Keem who was had a trading post in the area and he encouraged the um, potters to make flat pieces of uh, slabs of clay and paint their traditional, their spiritual, their casino designs on there and um, with that uh, we, they found, the potters found that um, the tourists purchased them more, they were easier to carry because they were flat. And so that's where tiles kind of came into being up till about now 1920s and then they died out for a little bit. And then about the 19, through the 1960s, again, it stopped for a while. And then when I started doing tiles was in 1980. And um, around that, that time, there was only three or four of us potters that were doing it. And then there was a, a book published, Hopi uh, Tewa Tiles, um, that was published and then everybody wanted to do tiles. But um, um, there's not too many of us, um, of potters that actually know how to keep them flat and um, um, without warping. So that's kind of a challenge there. And as far as the canteens, um, just looking at uh, some of the pottery in the collections and seeing the designs on the old canteens. And canteens were something that we actually used to haul water back in our, our ancestors used to haul water from the springs to their homes. And so I got really interested in the canteens and just kind of started making my own upright forms rather than ones, the ones that actually, um, when you carry them, they lean, lean against the back, so they're flat on one side. Mm -hmm. So I have kind of, um, I have different shapes, different sizes that I, that I use, but those are actually two of my favorite forms of pottery that I, that I like to make. Uh, speaking about history, Pottery was made by women only, but it's now done by both. What do you believe brought about this change? And then how do others at Hopi feel about it? Um, well, I think what, what brought the change about was actually that um, within families of potters, there were actually some, some of the potters uh, that were doing pottery didn't have 
the ability to pass it on to the female in the family or they the female just didn't want to pick it up or the male um, individual was more curious about it and they begin to they begin to produce or do pottery um, probably around the 1960s 1970s it was more or less frowned upon for the Hopi um, male persons to be doing pottery because we believed that it was a it was a female thing to do mm -hmm. um, and uh, there wasn't too many that kind of um, came out of the closet that were potters at that time but um, now in this age and time, there are, are, are many males that do pottery. Um, some of them have become, become very, very well-known potters. And um, I, don't, I don't really have an issue with, you know, I, there's really no issue with me about male potters. Um, so I don't, I don't frown upon it. You know, I do encourage it. If you're able to do pottery and that's your interest, I say, you know, uh, take it and go with it, whatever makes you happy and you're happy doing the art form, then um, that's something you want to go ahead and uh, pursue. You know, we all start at the bottom some, sometimes. I mean, there's a time when we first take the first fill of clay or put our hands into, uh, first put our hands to work in uh, whatever art form we're wanting to uh, experiment with or we're curious about. and. Um, and I'd like to say that there's many doors that will be open for you. You know, don't be shy about what you're doing. Um, you know, don't be afraid to go beyond your comfort zone, out of your boundaries, and and just experiment all the time. Don't be afraid to do it. You can you can experiment when somebody says, "Have you tried this before?" and they offer you the materials or whatever. Um, um, take it and, and, and at least try it. You may, you may not like it, but at least you know within yourself that you've, you've tried it. And that way, if anybody has ever asked you, did you ever try this before? And then you have, you have an opinion to give back, give back to them. You have to, to, say, to say like, yes, I did. And this is what it was like. You know, I liked it or I didn't like it because of this or that. But um, there's no limitations to whatever you do, you know. Um, the sky's the limit, so um, take it and, and go with it. And um, one day you might find yourself at the top as well. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Asquale. <laughs>